Hey guys, it's your boy Chill here, and welcome back to, I don't know, I don't know what I'm calling this series yet, probably going to be something, final name that goes on the video is going to be something that has some decent SEO potential, but uh, yeah, we're, you know, we're working out with the, the Chill engine here, and today I'm going to show you guys some powerful tools to set up your, uh, your project properties or settings. Uh, so, I mean, normally, you know, what I would do when I'm setting up a new project is I'd go into, let me see, your properties here. And, you know, I'd start to, to set like a bunch of settings that are important to me. You saw one already where the VCC include directories, you know, I added the solution base directory for here so that we could include our headers from core. Um, but you know, there's a bunch of other ones, you know, we go into CPP language and you know, you know, I'm setting the language standard to the latest possible stuff like that. You know, the, the way we handle code generation, I mean, there's stuff like floating point. I'm not going to set the precise, I'm going to use the fast one, but here's the thing. If we're using multiple projects, you're going to have to set those for each project. And then any time you decide you need to change that, you probably have to change it in all the projects to make them all line up properly. And then sometimes you might forget one and that'll cause problems down the line. It's just, it's annoying. It's very annoying. And uh, there's actually a better way to do things. And that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So uh, let's go back to this one here, properties. Let's... Um, let us edit. So we're going to delete this and we're going to, so I think that's the only one that we actually changed across all these. Everything else is just what it came with in the defaults. So there is a window here called the property manager. Let me just, ah, ah, bastards trying to sneak one by me here. So yeah, when you add a new project, it, gems in again the stupid uh, platforms that I said I didn't want. I don't know how to I don't know how to get rid of them permanently. Every time I add a project it's like yeah let's here you go here have some win 32 have some x86 uh, and I'm like no dog get that shit out of my face but they're like no no check th check this out. How about this time? You want it this time? So anyways get rid of that. Get rid of that garbage. Uh so yeah, there's a window here called the property manager and this is powerful shit. Now, you might not know, you might say, I don't have that window, Chili. Where's that window? Well, all the windows, all the good stuff is all living in here. So you just gotta look in here. It's gotta be in here somewhere, right? Uh, don't make a liar out of me. Where's the property manager, you bastard solution explorer? You know, other windows and it might, oh, it's right here. Okay, that's confusing. There's a properties window and there's a property manager. So anyways, we go to the property manager. It lists our projects. And in here we can expand by our um, configuration slash platform combination. For, for each com viable combination of those two things, you're gonna have a folder here. And this has all of your property pages. So what are those? Okay, so you might not be aware of this, but Visual Studio has like a property inheritance cascade that it has. I mean, you're probably aware that there is a default, just a base default built into Visual Studio for each property. Like for example, the language version. And you know that you can override that by setting values in the, uh, the project properties, but there's more layers than that. So you have the base, default and you know you have the project level settings but there's some steps in between that after the base default built in sheets these are built-in sheets they ship with visual studio and they're uh, collections of properties that you can apply to your projects uh, so let me just go to the property manager we can see these sheets here these are built into visual studio and they are applied to your projects based on how you set your project up and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, we can't reorder these or anything, um, but they override the defaults of just base Visual Studio build system. Now, after those built-in sheets, and here's the big one, here's the one that we're gonna be talking about today, you have custom 
property sheets. And these ones you can define and you can reorder them to change, you know, how they override each other. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be showing today. And then after that, you can set in the project itself, you can set overrides that override all your property sheets and defaults. And then after that, the, the most powerful level is setting it per file. So per file, you can have specific settings that override this whole cascade here. And like I said, custom property sheet is what we're going to be looking at today. So let's add a custom property sheet to our core. And this is going to be just a baseline thing that sets stuff that I basically want on all of my projects. So let's go add new property sheet. And um, yeah, we'll store it. Where should we store it? I think we want to store it actually just in the root of our solution because we're going to be using this for multiple projects and we'll call this one baseline just because there we go so we add a baseline property sheet and you see it goes above all of you can't drag it below it your custom property sheets will always override any of the um, the built-in ones so we can go properties here and now we have a whole bunch of different properties that we can set. Uh, so what do I want to set here? Well, there's a bunch of C++. So first one, VCC directories. So for every one of my projects, I want it to have to, you know, do the stuff that I would just did in the last video. So I got that set up here. If I go, OK, should be in here. Yes. And then if I go apply, so that'll be in that property sheet. Now, what's the other stuff that I usually set? One thing that I usually set is the uh, the Unicode character set setting, whether it's wide characters or narrow characters. And you'll notice that that's not in here, and I'll tell you why that's interesting. The reason why is very interesting, and we'll get to that. But let's look for other settings that we generally want. And um, uh, multiprocessor compilation. So I generally want this turned on uh, because it's faster, right? STL checks. We'll leave these at the defaults for now. Um, optimization. So these are generally going to be set by built in style sheets. We look here, we see debug has core window library Unicode. So yeah, the release one has whole program optimization applied and the debug one does not have that. But I believe in the project settings themselves, they actually have those baked in to the different um, configurations instead of using a property sheet, which I'm not sure if that's a good way, but we'll worry. We won't worry about that right now. Let's just set the things that seem most important to set. Uh, Preprocessor, we don't need those just yet. Code generation. So this one is going to have some good stuff. Uh, runtime library, that's going to be set in the project itself. Security set. Yeah, we'll leave all this stuff on, but we definitely want floating point model to be fast. Now, language. Um, where is the preprocessor? Force conformance. Maybe that's not. Maybe that's in here. Uh, pre. Use standard conforming preprocessor. Yes. So I definitely want that. Uh, language. Again, we definitely want preview. Um, I mean, we'll leave these the way they are, but I do want runtime type information for sure. Um, I think that's basically conformance mode. All right, so we'll do permissive minus. And I mean, I guess I'll, yeah, we will enforce these. I think these are already set in the projects, but it's not, it's not bad to add them to our sheet as well. Do want runtime type information, disable languages. We'll, we'll leave that stuff. I don't want to mess around with it too much and start breaking some Microsoft code, but this is going to be good. Now here's and maybe an important one. I do not want to be using pre-compiled headers, but I assume that uh, this is going to be overridden in the project itself. So we'll have to undo the project ones. But yeah, I think that's about what we're looking at 
uh, for changes. I don't think we need anything in the linker. So yeah, let's hit OK on that. And then we want to apply this to the other uh, configurations here. So I don't know. Yeah, I think I have to go add existing property sheet. And we'll do baseline. It's a little annoying. And maybe, there, maybe there's like a better shortcut for that, but I don't know it. Um, and here we go. And now we've added it to all these. And that's now you see the beauty of this, because now uh, if I ever want to change any of those settings, I go into baseline, I change this property sheet and it will apply to every project, every configuration. Um, and that is already a huge win. So now we go back to our projects here. And I think we're going to have to undo some things that this project is overriding. Like you see these bolded things here. That's what the project itself is overriding for the most part. Um, so like, I mean, SDL checks, that's fine. The one thing that I'm really annoyed, like we got to undo here is we inherit from defaults. So here I'm mostly just going through and undoing any, um, useless overrides. We can see here that it was overriding, but it, the override was the same thing as our as our cascade has. Uh, now remember I said that the Unicode settings, we can't set those in our property sheet. Uh, but if we go into advanced, we see that there is a prop, look, something that looks like a property here and says character set. Use a Unicode character set. Um, so what this setting actually does, it's quite interesting. If we look in our property manager, uh, we see that we have Unicode support added to our core project. So if I go into Solution Explorer and Core, Advanced, and I say uh, change this to the multi-byte character set, and I apply that, I look at my property manager, and you see it's changed the built-in property sheet that is applied to, uh, to this project. So that's a little interesting thing. You note that some of the settings in the project property aren't actually direct property settings. They're settings that cause a built-in property sheet to be applied to that configuration. So it's, uh, it's a little weird, but once you understand it, then you know a little more about what's actually going on uh, in these build properties. And we can see that uh, things like the choice of, uh, for example, let me see here, uh, runtime library, you know, all these multi-threaded or DLL, debug, all those options, those are actually set in the project itself because we can look in the property manager, we can see there's no, there's no sheet being applied here that differentiates between debug and release. The only differentiation is whether whole program optimization is being used. That Those settings are applied as a sheet, not as a direct property in the project properties. So yeah, the difference between debug and release is directly set in here. We could create sheets for that and pull it out, but I'm just going to leave it like this for now. I'll create sheets for it if I decide I need to change those settings, if I need to move from DLL to a static linking, for example. But for right now, it's annoying, so I'll just leave it, you know, directly set in here. But yeah, that is the, uh, the property sheets in a nutshell. And just let me show you how this works. Um, I can't drag this around here, but if I add another property sheet, I'll just add a fake one here. I'm not going to actually keep it yeah, to backslash. So we'll just add property sheet. You can see now I can drag these around. Well, okay, I can't drag them around, but I can go move earlier, uh, move later, and that will change, you know, the priority of these sheets. But for example, I can't move this one earlier. I can't move it below the built-ins. So your your custom property sheets will always have priority over the built-in ones. But yeah, now we should be able to remove the PCH and we'll move remove framework as well from here. Uh, and I will delete this. Yes, and I will delete 
you and you and I should be able to build and run again should not complain about missing pre-compiled header and there you go so now we have our sheet set up we have our basic uh, language settings for all of our projects and uh, Bob is your uncle so that will do it for this video I uh, hope you learned something new and uh, yeah you know if you have any better ideas, like if, for example, if you know how to stop it from adding x86 platform every time I add a new project, let me know. You know, I'm always interested in that information and I will, uh, I'll try to incorporate it into future videos. Uh, but until then, thanks for watching and I will see you later with some more, uh, some more chill. <laughs>